Now, welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And don't worry, there will be no Kenobi spoilers in this video for the fifth episode of Kenobi. Though, review will be coming on my channel and a Let's Talk Some Kenobi will be coming on this channel tomorrow. Woohoo! All right, let's get right to the news. All right, we're going to talk about Kenobi, but not in a spoilery fashion. <laughs> we're we're going to talk about some of the uh, studies of the how the show has done so far. So, Obi-Wan Kenobi... Most in-demand new series the week it was released, a new study shows. So we've got the data analysis from Parrot Analytics, and they show that Obi-Wan Kenobi is, is very strong right now. Strong in the force, some could say. It topped the charts of the new shows the week it debuted. It averaged 39.2 times more demand than average series for the week. The company tracks all sorts of consumer engagement, from views, downloads, streams, to social media interactions. The reports of the chart show that Obi-Wan is at the top, closely followed by Our Flag Means Death at 33.8 and Star Trek Strange New Worlds at 32.7. It must be noted that this time window for the study ranged from May 28th to June 3rd, meaning it included the release of Part 3 of Kenobi as well, because that was on June 1st. So I've got a list up showing for what the top 10 most in-demand shows of the week. While Stranger Things' absence may be surprising, Surprising to some people, this only covers new shows, not oh, new seasons. I was going to this... say, how is Stranger Things not on this list, but it's only new shows. So we don't really know how it competed against mm -hmm. the uh, the heavyweight. No. The other heavyweight, I guess I could say. <laughs> not in this article. Interesting. But this is how it's done against new shows. Um, I really do like that Moon Knight is sitting in the fourth spot, despite the fact that the show's total finished with its initial run. Hmm. But it's hanging out at number four. Hooray! I mean, this is no surprise. I think we all thought a new Kenobi was going to be huge. It's going to be gigantic. And the bigger it is, I think the more tempted they will be to do a second season of Kenobi, which... Don't scare me like that. <laughs> well, d I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to get into spoiler territory of what I thought of today's episode. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. something maybe some people want and other people definitely don't want. All right, let's move on to the second article. We're going to talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi's Nielsen viewer ratings and how they are in a dead heat with Stranger Things. Interesting, okay. Yes. The Disney Plus series has managed to hold its own terms in overall audience viewership compared to its rival, Stranger Things 4, Volume 1, at least in the U.S. We have no overseas data yet. Nielsen revealed that Memorial Day weekend head-to-head -head between the two shows was white hot with tens of millions of viewers on both shows. More specifically, Stranger Things 4, Volume 1, and its three previous seasons got 12.72 million views from May 27th to May 29th. Obi-Wan came in a close second with 11.18 million views during the same amount of time. Many of these views are shared, but that's still like a pretty massive achievement for Disney+, Plus, which has now entered its third year of operations. I think what's interesting here is that we know these aren't entirely accurate numbers. Like, we don't have actual numbers from Disney Plus or Netflix. Mm -hmm. But what is kind of, I think, you have to keep in mind here is that Stranger Things has all of its episodes released and Kenobi only had the first two at this point? Or would it be three at this point? At like, this point, it would have been two. It was so, May 27th through the 29th. I mean, do the views take that in mind? Because if you watch the first, you know, three episodes of Stranger Things and you watch the first two episodes of Kenobi... Does that, you know, does that mean more views for Stranger Things just because it has more episodes or is it more well, popular? Well, you look at, they were talking about Stranger Things, it includes the new volume plus its three seasons. Okay, so it gets all its history viewers. too, so people might be trying to catch up. So, mm -hmm. who knows? I mean, maybe Kenobi is bigger than Stranger Things season four. I don't know. It's it's a it's a really hard thing to say I guess, without the official numbers from Netflix or Disney. Yeah. But to even have that many views for a new show... But it's Obi Wan pretty, Kenobi. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I knew this show was going to be huge. I mean, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people watching this show, no doubt about it. All right, but in terms of overall uh, minutes watched, it's no contest, of course. Stranger Things Volume Four, combined with its previous three seasons, amounted to 5.1 billion minutes viewed. Jeez. <laughs> versus Obi Wan Kenobi's one billion minutes viewed. But, of course, that's the catch. Stranger Things has a lot more viewable content, both in terms of average per episode runtime and the number of episodes, three full seasons, and a chunk of the fourth. It's 32 episodes, which is also well over 30 hours of content. 
while the premiere from Obi Wan Kenobi is about two hours of content. Yeah, it's under two hours for two episodes. So again, this is not exactly a fair comparison. Furthermore, only four billion of the minutes viewed were of the newly released Volume One for Stranger oh, okay. Things. The remaining 1.1 billion minutes were for previous episodes. Wow. A lot of people going back and rewatching. <laughs> yeah, we should have because yeah, there's nah. there's a drop off a bit. I, I'm fine with not rewatching at all, especially so, how long season four is. So naturally, Stranger Things in this format has a built-in advantage. Plus, dropping all their episodes at once and not using the weekly format shows for a more runtime. But yeah. that's what it shows. I mean, I think what we can take away from this is they are both <laughs> extremely popular and both have a lot of people watching. Absolutely. And there is no... I don't know that there's a fair metric to... Other than maybe views on the first episode, like total views, and if those people watch the whole thing. I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I, it's very hard to compare these two, but they're both gigantic. We, we knew that. So, interesting, but who knows if we can really take anything away from it. Mm-hmm. All right, next article. Taiko Watiti creating original characters and stories... For his Star Wars movie. The director said he's creating an entirely new group of characters for his movie and expanding the galaxy with it. Here's the quote. Look, I think for the Star Wars universe to expand, it has to expand. I don't think I'm any use in Star Wars universe making a film where everyone's like, Oh great, well that's the blueprints, the Millennium Falcon. Ah, that's Chewbacca's grandmother. That all stands alone, that's great. Though I would like to take something new and create some new characters, and just expand the world. Otherwise, it feels like it's a very small story. Watiti is currently promoting Pixar's Lightyear, followed by Thor, Love, and Thunder, so expect him to be asked more about the Star Wars movie in the weeks ahead. Yeah, I hope nothing... There's no specific references to previous films. No, I mean, not that there can't be Jedi and Sith, or we can't mention the Republic or the Empire or anything like that, but let's not have it related to any characters we've seen before. And not have a barrage of, you know, fan service returning characters from mm-hmm. here and there. Though I do like that sort of thing. I'm not, you know, I'm not against it per se. But yeah, let's let's do something completely original and cross our fingers and hope it starts something new, something really fresh with Star Wars. And, I mean, I, I like Taika Waititi. I, he has a very unique style and part of me says it fits very well in Star Wars. Another part says it's kind of iffy at times. I don't know. I hope he puts some aliens in the main cast. That'd be nice. I, he better. Well, I think I think he will. He probably will play he does an like alien aliens in the main cast. Yeah. He, he probably would. will play one. Yeah, which would be fine. I what if it. they run into Korg? <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. He's probably going to play like a, a rock. He's going to play a Geode from uh, the High Republic. Oh. And that way he doesn't have to say anything because Geode doesn't speak. But I, I'm kidding about that, of course. But no, I, I hope it's a lot of aliens. I hope it's kind of, you know, fun and a little different, yet serious. Of course, we Star Wars mm-hmm. fans do want our a serious story underneath it all I, I don't know i i really have my fingers crossed i like i like his work but at the same time he can get a little goofy goofy mm-hmm. yeah maybe a little too goofy sometimes so we'll see i mean no. i still love thor ragnarok even though it's a bit goofy i've said it before it I, does have that underlying heart and story I've said that it he's before. known for i i hate it as a thor movie because i love surprise surprise i love the marvel character thor i've loved him most of my life what? i know shocking considering <laughs> my name but it's not the best Thor movie, but it is a fun, enjoyable movie. I know. Oh, and it has a lot of heart, and it does have a serious sure. undertones in its story, just like there's, you like. Like I said, there's a lot of good things. I mean, it's funny, and people are going to laugh at me, but I almost like Thor The Dark World better than Ragnarok in ways, because it's more Thor than, you know, we get a lot more into some of the other lore, and I don't know. Let's not get into this debate. No, but, let's move on to Obi Wan Wednesday yeah. and Yay. other collecting news because Wednesday is kind of turning into our collector's day. So mm. if we have collector news, it probably is going to come out from us on a Wednesday. Well, a lot of times they do fan first Wednesdays too, so absolutely. Makes sense. From Funko, we're getting Qualen Roken pop, as well as a new Vader. As everyone remembers, Roken was the person. At the, the, along the path. Yeah, on the planet Jabim. Oh, yeah. But Everybody remembers except for me. I'm like, <laughs> no, I thought. Well, we don't, you don't hear his name the, very often. No, he's so. like the pilot. Yeah. I'm the pilot. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, there's like a couple pilots and I, uh, the, I mean. The Vader good. is a GameStop exclusive. I'm not sure on the Roken because the, has the, uh, the site 
Obi-Wan Wednesdays is not very informative. They're like, here's the releases. And they show you pictures of a couple things and they go, there's more. But then they don't actually tell you what else is coming out. Mm. It's it's a really vague thing. Kind of have to hunt down things. It's interesting. Moving on to the Hasbro Black Series line. Purge Trooper and one JAC, the Bounty Hunter Droid. One Jack. One Jack. The Bounty Hunter who mm-hmm. everybody thought was Forlom, who yeah. looks like Forlom. Looks is like probably Forlom. a repaint of Forlom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It totally looks like a repaint of Forlom. Yeah. I mean, it what, is. If we're getting him, does that mean we're going to get the dinosaur Bounty Hunter? I, I hope really, so. I mean, he's at least a brand new mole, and he'll be really interesting in the collection. But let's talk about that Purge Trooper a little bit. The Purge Trooper, because as we know, there has been a Gaming Greats release of, of them, the yeah. Pur- yeah, of the Purge Trooper in the past. And they were always GameStop exclusives. Thankfully, these ones are not GameStop. They're just as bad. They're Walmart exclusives. This might be worse. Yeah. Actually, it is worse. I think Walmart is definitely worse for pre-orders than GameStop. Walmart is rough. GameStop, I never really have too much. Probably because a lot of the GameStop pre-orders are are just kind of repaints. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they're not really original figures. Well, they like to do gaming grades because they're GameStop. Yeah, yeah. And the gaming grades tend to be just other figures painted differently and a new accessory. So... They tend to not be as a hot commodity, shall we say, as like a new figure. The Perch Trooper that we're looking at is wearing the Phase 2 armor from Kenobi. So it is different from the armor in the Jedi Fallen Order one. I do have them both up on the screen so you can kind of take a, take a look at it and see the differences for yourself. They're pretty much helmet differences for the most part, but they're up there for you. Like I said, they're both Walmart exclusives, set to go on sale tomorrow at 12 Central or whenever Walmart feels like putting them up. <laughs> Vintage Collection has Darth Vader, The Dark Times. Bum, bum, bum. Mm. We've heard rumors of this one for a while, but it's finally going to be released tomorrow. I have a HasLab update for everybody. Reva's Saber is currently up to 1,036 backers. Still a long way from the 5,000 goal. The it has 26 days to go and no... Tier information has been given if there will be a tier. There's going to be no creation of the saber. So. Well, the tier is they're throwing in another saber. Yeah. And then everyone's like, crud, now I need it. Yeah. <laughs> because I the kinda... tier is better than the main. Who can say? Hasbro also revealed a Tala Imperial officer in the works. I found this reveal on Twitter. Uh, it's a digital rendition of the figure, and it looks like it's supposed to go up with the pre-orders tomorrow at Hasbro Pulse and other major retailers. I hope the uh, Purge Trooper in Kenobi is consistent with what Purge Troopers were likely to see in uh, the next Fallen Order game. In Survivor? Survivor, yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. I can see that. I, I hope, hope so. I hope they're consistent. Yeah. They should be. All right, let's bring you some extra news that I was uh, sent. Thanks again to Jenny. She sent me some collecting news exclusive to GameStop. There's actually two new Pop Funko series right now. First is called the Bounty Hunters Collection, inspired by the scene in Empire Strikes Back. They all connect together to form the scene, so you get the little wall backing and the stands they're standing on. It's 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 kind of it's a really nice cool. display I, piece. I can't, yeah, I won't deny that one. I think I like Pop's display pieces like more than I like just getting an individual Pop. Yeah. They just add a little... Something extra, you know, when you get that whole display scene there for you. You can order them now. They are nineteen ninety nine each. It's not cheap, but they are cool. They so are cool. That's going to run you a pretty penny. <laughs> also exclusive to GameStop, we have the Funko Star Wars Red Sabers Series Volume 1, which means there'll be more volumes down the road. It looks like there's going to be five total figures in the first volume. Darth Sidious is available now. Darth Maul is up for pre-order. I'm going to fashion a guess at the other three, based on their silhouettes. I'm thinking Savage Opress, Darth Tyrannus, and Darth Vader. These are glow-in-the-dark pops, the saber glows, as well as the red lava sections on the base. So there's a little extra fun in there. But they are more pricey. I suppose putting that glow-in-the-dark paint on there makes it a little more <laughs> crazy. They're twenty two ninety nine each. That's a lot for glow-in-the-dark paint. I need to get into the selling the glow-in-the-dark paint business you at do. that point. What are you do. What are you even thinking? Lastly, Amazon has an exclusive pop set that, when assembled, recreates the Duel of the Fates. Each figure is twenty nine ninety nine, but Of course, they come with the stand to kind of finish out the whole collection look. Uh, Obi-Wan comes out June 17th. Mall September 1st, but no current date has been given for Qui-Gon. Hmm. All very cool. 
kind of sad to see how much pops are. I mean, we don't really get into pops, pops too much. Pops cost we more did. than black series. I know. Well, yeah, pops used to be like nine dollars, right? Like eight ninety nine was pretty common price for them way back in way back in the day. They've actually back been around for a while. Back in my time, when pops were no, but they <laughs> pops have almost been around for about ten years at this point, right? They've been around I for a while. So. Maybe not quite ten. Maybe like eight or nine. I'm sure someone in the comments will let us know what the yeah. Exact... I feel like they've been around for almost ten years at this point. Mm -hmm. Pro impressive. They're not like they, they've pro impressive. proven they're not one of those little fad things like anybody who's old enough to remember Beanie Babies from the nineties. Oh, they're still making Beanie Babies. Well, sure, but they're not uh, like they were by no. probably like ninety seven, ninety eight. I think that's when they were just huge. I don't know. But no, I, I'm glad to see, you know, Pops have kind of endured and weren't just this little fad thing that lasted for a year or two. That Here we are, now, they're, now they get to charge premium prices for uh, glow-in-the-dark paint. <laughs> Absolutely, they do. All right, well, that's all we got for you this time. So take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of any of today's news. Tell us if you're going to be buying any of these figures. And let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.